on air, online, and on smartphones. <laughs> at BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Welcome to News Hour. It's live from the BBC World Service in London. I'm Tim Franks. Vladimir Putin congratulates Russian troops on seizing Mariupol, but some Ukrainian forces are still holding out. We'll hear from a commander inside the Azovstal steel plant. There are people under the rubble. We don't know how many, and we don't have the equipment to lift those heavy slabs. There has to be a whole humanitarian mission arranged to free those people. Also, a series of bomb attacks across Afghanistan have left dozens of people dead. The women of Myanmar have taken up arms against the military junta. We kill bad people, so we don't feel bad about it. The military torture people cruelly. Because of that, we don't feel sorry if they die. And why there's been a howl out to vampires to come by hundreds to an English seaside town. All that to come after the news. This is the BBC News at Fiona MacDonald. President Biden says the United States will send another $800 million of military assistance to Ukraine. He was speaking after meeting the Ukrainian Prime Minister, Denis Shmihal, at the White House. Later, Mr. Shmihal told a meeting at the Capitol that Russia had been creating crises deliberately. The aims of Russia are to create the next crisis, an energy crisis. We go through this in the winter time. Now they create migration crisis. Now their purpose and the aim is create food crisis in African, Asian and European countries. So I hope that the United States also will support Ukraine and all of the countries to stop and do not let Russians create next and next crises in the democratic countries all around the world. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has indicated he's pursuing possible diplomatic or military avenues for countering the Russian siege of Mariupol, where only a small pocket of Ukrainian resistance remains. He said Kiev had offered to release Russian prisoners in exchange for trapped Ukrainians. Mr. Zelensky suggested a military counteroffensive was also a possibility if Western allies provided what he said were the right weapons. The extradition to the United States of the former Honduran president, Juan Orlando Hernandez, is underway. He'll be tried in New York on three charges associated with drug trafficking. Will Grant reports. The disgraced former president of Honduras was handed over to officials from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency who'd arrived at the Hernana Costa Mejia airfield base to take him into custody. Once the final legal obstacles to his extradition were listed earlier this month, it was always a question of time before Mr. Hernandez found himself on a plane to the United States. Mr. Hernandez's brother, a former Honduran congressman called Tony Hernandez, has already been sentenced to life plus 30 years in a U.S. prison for cocaine trafficking, and the drugs and weapons charges against the former president carry a similar sentence. British MPs have agreed to set up an inquiry into whether the Prime Minister Boris Johnson lied to them about parties in Downing Street during lockdown. Well, the best investigation won't take place until others have concluded. Helen Catt reports. This committee does have the power to bring in some sanctions of its own, and that can be things like suspending a member of parliament from coming into the House of Commons. So I think the immediate thing here, though, is that what this does is it guarantees that Partygate, as this is known here, is not going away once that police investigation concludes, once the senior civil servant Sue Gray has published her report. That's not going to be the end of it now, because then there will be this investigation into what Boris Johnson told MPs about it. World news from the BBC.